A 55-year-old man is brought to the emergency room. His dyspneic, his heart rate is 45, and his blood pressure is 85 over 40 millimeter of mercury. Lab results are significant for hyperkalemia and hypoglycemia. ECG shows normal QRS and prolonged PR interval. His wife mentions that he has been taking a medication for his hypertension. Among the given options, which one has most likely caused these findings? How do you like Captopril? Captopril is an ACE inhibitor. It causes hyperkalemia and it also induces cough because it induces bradycanin. But it does not drop the heart rate and it does not cause hypoglycemia. So it cannot be the correct answer. How about diazoxide and what is it commonly used for? It is a potent antihypertensive used in the management of hypertensive emergencies. But our patient has been taking his medications at home and not in the emergency room. So it seems that diazoxide can't be the correct answer. What is the mechanism of action of diazoxide? It is a potassium channel activator and causes local relaxation in smooth muscles by increasing membrane permeability to potassium ions. This turns off voltage-gated calcium ion channels and as a result inhibits or slows down generation of action potential in the heart muscles. What is one of the unique usages of diazoxide? Treatment of insulinoma. Why is it used in the treatment of insulinoma? Because it inhibits secretion of insulin from the beta cells of the pancreas and as a result it causes hyperglycemia. But our patient had hypoglycemia and not hyperglycemia. Therefore, diazoxide cannot be the correct answer. How does diazoxide inhibit insulin secretion? By inhibiting the calcium channels on the beta cells and as a result inhibiting release of preformed insulin from the pancreas. How about nifedipine? It is a calcium channel blocker and it can be used for the management of hypertension. It causes hyperglycemia, likewise diazoxide, by inhibiting calcium channels on the beta cells and dropping insulin output. Also, it neither causes hyperkalemia nor it causes bronchospasm. So nifedipine cannot be the correct answer as well. How about praesacin? Praesacin is an alpha-1 blocker. It relaxes vessels and it is commonly used in the management of essential hypertension. But it cannot be the correct answer because it does not cause bronchospasm or bradycardia. Actually, reflex tachycardia is one of the side effects of praesacin. Well, the best answer is propranolol. Why does propranolol cause bradycardia? Because it has negative chronotropic effect and inhibits beta-1 receptors on this A node. Of course, it also slows the AV conduction and this also drops the heart rate. What is the term used to describe the effect of any compound that reduces the AV conduction. Negative dromotropic effect. How does 
through pranalog cause hypotension. It inhibits the beta-1 receptors on the JG cells of the kidney and as a result drops the renin angiotensin output. Dropping the level of the angiotensin 2 explains the pressure dropping effects of the propranolol. Incidentally, what is one of the ideal scenarios for the use of beta blockers in general? Hyperrenanemic hypertensive conditions. Conditions that are associated with a high level of renin and angiotensin. How does propranolol cause hypoglycemia? Sympathetic beta-2 stimulation releases glucagon. Glucagon in the liver promotes glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis and as a result, it causes hyperglycemia. Propranolol is a non-selective beta blocker. Therefore, it inhibits glucagon secretion via inhibition of the beta-2s and as a result, it causes hypoglycemia. How does propranolol cause hyperkalemia? Normally, epinephrine via beta-2 stimulation causes hypokalemia. It moves potassium into the cells in general and into the muscle cells that assume a very high mass in the body in particular. This leads to hypokalemia. Propranolol inhibits this effect and causes hyperkalemia. How does propranolol increase the PR period on the ECG? PR period represents the time for the spread of the electrical discharges through the conductive pathways of the heart. Given that the AV node has the slowest conductive velocity, the length of the PR is for most part due to the passage of the discharges through the AV node. Beta-1 stimulation has a positive dromotropic effect and shortens the PR period. Inhibition of the beta-1 receptors by all beta blockers, including propranolol, increases the PR period. I just said that propranolol increases the PR period. The PR period in this diagram is represented by this red arrow. But how does propranolol do this? It does it this way. Well, I will do it one more time, this time very slowly. So how does propranolol increase the PR period? It does it this way. Well, this was just an illusion, a mnemonic so that you don't forget that all beta blockers increase the PR period. Which of the following conditions is a unique indication for administration of propranolol? Actually, propranolol should be avoided or used cautiously in all of these conditions except option E. In diabetics who inject insulin to themselves, it may mask the symptoms of hypoglycemia such as tachycardia. Also, beta 2s normally dilate the vessels and bronchioles. Propranolol reverses both functions, hence it is contraindicated in asthma, Raynaud's disease, and Prinzmetal or vasospastic angina. Therefore, the best answer must be option E, congestive heart failure of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy.
Beta blockers, such as propranolol, have negative inotropic effect, and they drop the contractility of the heart, and as a result, they may cause congestive heart failure. If this is the case, then why we use beta blockers for the congestive heart failure of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? Of course, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can cause congestive heart failure. But the best treatment for this congestive heart failure is to use beta blockers and or calcium channel blockers. Normally, these two classes of medications decrease the heart rate and decrease the contractility. And if they decrease the contractility, naturally they cause congestive heart failure. So why do we use them in this case? In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the goal of treatment is to alleviate the resistance to filling of the heart. Both beta blockers and calcium channel blockers relax the heart and as a result, they allow the heart to fill up better. Additionally, they slow down the heart rate and as a result, they allow for more filling time as well.